In today's video, I'm gonna show you this 2000 watt solar install I recently did on my RV, and I'll also show you how it's powered. This new design 200 watt flexible solar panel was recently released a few months ago from Renogy. This is a newer design from their 175 watt panel that's been very popular. The new one now uses half cut cells and nine bus bars, which this is pretty much the same technology that you'll see in the same residential panels that we have in our shop that is installed on homes and businesses and more. The older 175 watt panel had plastic beads that helped absorb light. The new panel does have the same plastic beads in it, but not quite as prominent as the older one. The new panel comes in at three times the thickness, which does make it a little bit more rigid and should make it more durable. Now before installing any of these solar panels, I pulled out all 10 to make sure that none of them were damaged, to make sure that the cords and connectors were good, and to make sure that the open circuit voltage was relatively close between all 10 of these solar panels. Now after doing an alcohol prep, I used 3M VHB double sided sticky tape. This allowed me to mount the solar panels to the roof of my RV very easy. I also did each one a little bit differently depending on the slope of the roof. This would allow any drainage of water that collected and also air to be able to get underneath the panel. And I will have a link of this down in the description below. Now before I mounted the solar panels, I washed the whole roof of my RV and then I brought up one solar panel and made marks along the roof with a pencil to get an idea of where I was going to mount these. I also did another prep with alcohol on the roof to get off any last residue. That way the 3M double sided tape could have a good chance to adhere to the roof properly and to make sure that these aren't going to fly off when driving down the road. Now honestly, one of the hardest parts about this was removing the red backing from the double-sided tape. Sometimes it was hard to get it started to peel off, but once you got a little corner started, then it would peel off easily, but try not to touch the exposed tape. This way you don't get any oil residues on it, and that way you make sure you get good adhesion and it stays properly mounted on the roof. Now take your time during this because once you get it mounted, it's pretty much not gonna come back up. I would butt it up against the next panel and then pull it back maybe a quarter inch to leave just a little bit of a gap. This would hopefully allow water to run off quickly and not kind of stay pulled between the two panels. Now when pressing down on these panels, just a medium pressure is all you need. No pinpoint pressure and do not walk on these. This could damage the solar panels causing arcing and causing you major problems down the road. So make sure you inspect these every once in a while and do not walk on them, I repeat. Do not walk on solar panels. Even rigid panels can be damaged. Okay, well, wiring right now. So now you can see all the panels are down. These five right here, so we got our one, two, three, and four or five right there. Those are going to be in series. Should give me 100 volts, roughly, at about 20 amps. And then we'll have to kind of maneuver this way. And then these five right here, so there's your one, two, three, four, and this five right here. I can't add another one there, don't have enough room. I can add one up there and one in the front. Maybe I'll do that later, I don't know. And then this one would join this crew down here for six, and then six. But again, these ones will be in series, same voltage, and then they parallel in. So just got to get everything wired up. I'm kind of pre-wiring just to kind of see. And plus, when you guys are doing this, you want to make sure you test your voltages too. Don't um, just assume that everything is still good. I've checked them already twice. I'll be checking them again. But because, uh, you know, you get a bad connector, maybe a bad extension that can save you some diagnosing later. Uh, that way, everything's putting out the same when you do both sides and uh, everything's equal and even. So I'll do some more wiring and I'll show you here in a minute what it looks like when we're done. All right. And this is about the finished product now. This is about 95% done with any solar system that you put on an RV. You sometimes start thinking about things that you would have done differently just because every layout is a little bit different. But holding down just most of the solar cords is just going to be your, your return of bond type tape. And I did try to make it to where everything is still serviceable because you know when you get too much solar in the way 
servicing anything, whether it be roof vents or your AC system and more, it can be very difficult uh, with all this in the way. So I tried to make it as user friendly as possible. So now being only about, like I said, 95% done, I still have to change a couple things because I don't like this where my roof inlet is. I'm going to be taking that one off. I'm going to turn it sideways because with your parallel connectors, because I do have this running in two different series, um, I couldn't run through the actual roof mount. So I ended up coming out here. I still got to add my fuse real quick. This was kind of like a a quick setup, but I do have also a breaker downstairs as well. With them being paralleled in again with those connectors, um, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I'm also gonna be adding another roof inlet for one panel that'll go here because, or it could go there, but more than likely here, because this is gonna be for the stock uh, system that's already on board. This stock system from GoPower was a pulse width modulation. So this is kind of older technology and this can't handle very much solar, but this is what charged the house batteries. So I am going to be adding one panel to this. I'll bring this back online because as the solar wires came through, they came in and then came out. So I had to butt splice the originals together, get them to pass through and continue on. But I'll add another one bring this back online to charge the house batteries and then those solar panels up there are doing something different now the wires come in right up there they go into my 30 amp disconnect that way you have a service disconnect so you can obviously service everything um, this was kind of a trial run that i was doing and i'll show you guys here kind of more of the results after i get some full sunlight but this is coming in to run a power station setup like this delta pro and you can also add extra batteries, which I'm playing with this right now. But what's cool is that this is a plug and play feature. So this makes it really easy for other people to just do an off grid system. You can hook up a lot of solar panels, plug it into this. Then I have my generator inlet cord, which is plugged in right here. And then that's the extra, but it's plug and play. You don't have to do a lot of crazy wiring, which you kind of see here. This is pretty excessive and can get real expensive, very complicated and confusing versus once you go with like a Delta Pro or other types of battery stations that are coming out, power stations anyway, it makes it so much simpler to do these off grids. But I'll show you guys some numbers here. Now, so far the installation has been great and nothing has moved. I have about 600 miles already on this solar system and I've driven out up to speeds of 70. Now, depending on how you park is going to affect the amount of input you get as you see the shading there from the AC unit would only allow me sometimes certain peak numbers. Most of the time I would see 1350 to 1400 depending and a peak of about 1550 because of the power station only allows so much but it did allow me to charge the EcoFlow Delta Pro in just a little bit over two and a half hours, and I was able to charge up the extra battery as well, run my front AC unit continuously, and also with extra battery power and more, I didn't even use my generator except for once just to turn it on. I ended up using the Wave 2 during the evening. This is a new heater and AC unit from EcoFlow as well, and it actually worked remarkably well because it is very efficient. The temperature right now with this little one is over 82 degrees because it's right next to the sun on the wall. But if you look down here about where your head is, it's only 73, which is actually a nice temperature. The other side of the wall was about 79 degrees, but I was able to cool the front bedroom down into the 60s. I ran the refrigerator on AC during the day and just before bed, I would turn it on the gas and then use the Wave 2 to keep cool at night. Now I did experiment with my main AC unit. As you can see by the numbers here, I had my refrigerator running on AC. I also had the converter on as well. And so that would draw 500 watts of power right there. Now I don't recommend utilizing your converter. That just draws a lot of power. But once you see the AC unit come on in the main room, which this one is not efficient at all and draws about 1600 watts, you can see I'm using too much power for the solar to keep up. Now, if I turned off the converter and turned off the AC on the refrigerator, this would allow me to pretty much break even, at least on this unit, as the AC that I have on mine is a 15K unit, and it's not actually as efficient as some of the other RVs that I've had that would only use about 1,400 or so of power depending on the unit. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys the numbers here. So if you take a look at my phone right now, so you can see 
This is pulling in about 1,350, 1,400 watts. The most I have seen is 1,550, and that will depend on how much the EcoFlow Delta Pro will allow because it's limited to 1,500 watts and 15 amps. But the way I have my solar wiring, um, you know, coming from here and up on the roof, we're at about a little over 100 volts. It's registering about 105, 107 sometimes, and 20 amps. Well, it's about 17 or so once it's loaded. And the most I ever get out of this so far that I've seen is, is about 1550, uh, because that's all that will allow to pump in, really. But right now, you can see the AC in my RV is, is going right now. So with the AC on, using about 1600 watts i'm only pulling in less than 1400 that's the main ac unit now if i was using my front ac unit it only burns about maybe 1100 or a little bit less uh so but depending on how you are angled to the sun and everything um you know that's about as much as i'll get if i had something that could hold more power technically after measuring this i should be getting like 1750 ish uh but that's about all that will allow so uh and if we take a look up here i was using this for a test uh just with the batteries and stuff that that's a really nice unit there if you i like victron stuff a lot there's no denying they make really good stuff but again i didn't want to go through all the wiring and everything when ecoflow has this there's a lot of other units that are coming out i'm also probably going to be doing something different here in the future that you guys will see but um, so I have 8 gauge wire that just comes into there, it goes into the 10 gauge there, which I had to make a connector there. And I can't use 8 gauge because that connector just kind of won't allow it, so I had to make my own. And trying to fit an 8 gauge wire just doesn't really work too well, so. And then I have some more cleaning up up here I gotta do and a few other things I gotta change. I also added a fan up there, which I plan to change that one out. That's an old boat fan. It's just, you know, basically for the bilge area when you exhaust the fumes out, right? So that's a leftover from a project that I had, um, or I was working on a customer's boat or something at the time, and it's just been kind of sitting in a box. So I use that, which goes down there to a remote switch. And so then I can exhaust the fumes out, or I mean not the fumes, thinking about boats again, but I can exhaust the hot air out. That'll come in fresh air from there or fresh air from over there. And then you can see the hose, it pumps it down and out, which it'll come out from underneath the trailer. And it kept the, um, the whole unit relatively at a good temperature. I think it stayed at 97, 98 the whole time. Um, so it never really got that hot at all when I had the extra battery up there as well. So that's kind of what this looks like. And again, if I had something that could accept a higher wattage in, then that's when you would see probably the 1750 peak-ish, give or take. And also with a, having 2000 watts up there at least, you know, I'm able to maintain higher numbers. Like right now I'm at 13, you know, 1370 roughly, but I can stay there the whole time. It doesn't really drop much, so. Um, or it'll pump in more so overall the system is doing really well at least for what I need it to do and Whenever you have solar it's it's better to have more than not enough because when you run in the shadier conditions uh, That's when having more solar is definitely better Okay, now overall the installation on this was real easy That's one thing that's nice about flexible solar panels is that it took me just a little bit over four hours to lay down the panels, stick them on, and even doing almost all of the wiring was about four to four and a half hours, give or take. And I did do some prep because of the uh, washing of the roof. And then of course, you know, a little bit of alcohol, but once the panels started going on, that's what's nice about flexible panels is that it's quick and easy. Now, why did I go with flexible solar panels? Just like you guys, you're probably wondering how come I didn't go with something more rigid like a 200 watt panel or maybe a larger residential panel that's maybe 300 to 400 watts. Well, like other people out there, I do not like drilling holes in my RV roof if I don't have to, and I don't like adding a maintenance item. 
So I didn't want to add any more maintenance to my roof, like drilling holes into it and then adding sealants and having to check on the sealants and the possibility of the um, panels coming loose. The original stock panel, the screws weren't even tight. And so I didn't actually like that, but there's a lot of different rigid panels you can get out there, whether it's a 200 watt from Renogy, they have a new one as well. And they also have a lot of residential panels that you can buy and pick up in certain places. And I have access to a lot of those all over the place, but I didn't have enough room to throw up the residential panels that I have here. These are 335 watts and they're LG panels they are really nice, but I could only get three of them up on my roof. And so then I'd only be limited to about a little over a thousand watts versus with a smaller panel like these flexible ones, you can put them all over the place and more. Now, what about as far as, you know, some of the rumors or things that you've seen as far as the flexible panels burning up? Well, I did a lot of research on this for over a year on whether I wanted to go with flexible panels. And I have seen just as many rigid panels burn up, whether it's from a known brand or not. Just the same thing with some of those flexible panels that you've also seen burn up as well. Those are from not the Renogy 175 watt panels that I could find anywhere. And since these new 200 watt panels are, they've only been out for a few months, there's not really any data on them yet. So that's what we're hopefully gonna collect over six months and then one year and to see how well they hold up. Now, one thing I did do is that I added um, a little bit of protection to uh, my roof and to the panels as well. I've been using this product for years on everything and I've always had good luck with it. Whenever I buy and sell, like whether it was my boat or if I was buying and selling my old trailer, I put 303 on almost everything. It's a great product. It helps prevent UV damage and more. So that's why I continue to use this and I'm hoping this will extend the life of not only the cables up there from getting, you know, UV damaged and also the panels as well, but it also protects your roof and is something you should probably do at least twice a year. Now, when it came to wiring up the solar system, it was actually super simple. I was able to get these extension kits from Renogy. So they help supply the project. Um, so these are 40 foot. And what's nice about getting the longer ones is that instead of buying a whole bunch of different lengths, if you buy maybe just a couple of the long ones, then you can custom cut and splice in um, to get more of the exact size you need. That way you don't have tons of excess cable. And then you can use the excess length of these ones and build your own custom length to everything that you need. And so then you would just take a solar kit like this. I think Renogy has them, but this one from Bouge RV is actually, it's a, easy kit it's super simple it's thirty dollars it already has a whole bunch of connectors that'll be in it i've already used all mine up um but i'll have a link down below that way you guys can check this out along with everything else in the video i'll, I'll make sure i put links down there with, that way you guys can check it out to see if any of this stuff is stuff you want to use um but it makes it a lot easier just having i think custom cable links that we don't have a lot of excess slack everywhere it kind of makes it look messy um, but they also have fuses you can buy at Renogy. Uh, they also have all the parallel adapters as well and, and other things. And again, I'll have lists and links down below of all this stuff. But so far, I've been super impressed with this because of the ease of installation. It's working really good. I need to get a bigger um, power station that can handle more solar input because right now, again, I am limited. But so again, if you're wondering about the rigid versus flexible panels, well, that really comes up to you, whether what you want to do, I guess, as far as the build that you're doing, because everybody's RV needs are going to be different. Everybody's RV build is going to be different. And this allows me to have a little bit more versatility on what I want to do by utilizing almost two systems, by using the big system for power stations, testing other things, and to bring you guys some more videos on, on uh, other off-grid situations that might work for you better because there are some other power stations and kits that I'm going to be testing here pretty soon. So that's why I kind of went this route because it allows me to have more flexibility in uh, what I want to do. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If this is something you would do, or are you in the flexible panels or absolutely not? I'm definitely curious to know. And I hope you guys like the video. Make sure to subscribe and I hope to see you guys next time.